Welcome to the Catholic Dadcast by Rich Puntang, where we break down all things dad from a Catholic perspective. Now more than ever, we need dads to step up their game. Gentlemen, buckle up and get ready for battle. What's up, family and friends? Rich Pintang at the Catholic Dadcast. I'm recording a live feed on Facebook on this first Saturday. This is going to be released on a Wednesday Wisdom. I'm going to be talking about my experience with Planned Parenthood. And yes, uh, I, I can say that uh, I can be as vivid as possible um, in terms of what I experienced, what our family had seen and learned from um, being a part of the uh, Protect Life and Family Ministry. Um, so, you know, typically on a Saturday, uh, on a first Saturday, what we, we do is we try to um, go to adoration. Me and wifey we go to adoration. We will go to um, 8 o'clock Mass, uh, but we've never taken the time to go to, um, to Planned Parenthood to to pray the rosary with the rest of the ministry. This particular weekend, we decided that it was something that we were called to do. And, you know, I, I really didn't know what to expect. You know, I just felt like um, going there to pray for those unborn babies and to represent the pro-life movement was a, an important part for us to take part in. Um, and, you know, shout out to, to Kelly and Brendan who just for through the years have done so much to pray for these babies, to pray for their souls, to pray uh, mercifully, to be empathetic and to try to save some lives. Um, because when, <clears throat> when I share some of the statistics that you hear um, about the abortion industry, it's shocking, but it's really no time for us to just sit back and just not do anything, which is the worst that we can do. You know, um, so, on the way to um, to Planned Parenthood, we had to come pick up the kids, um, and waking them up on a Saturday was like pulling teeth. But um, I didn't know what to expect as far as what their mood was going to be like. Were they going to be crabby that they woke up early on a Saturday? Um, were they going to be asking a lot of questions? And sure enough, they were asking a lot of questions. Um, but what I what I did end up finding was that I needed to stop before I reacted as a typical dad would. And I had to make sure that I could set the tone the right way. And so what I did was I kind of tried to explain to them on the way, which again, it's a 15 minute ride. I tried to explain to them that um, we're going there because um, this is an abortion clinic. Um, they promote abortions that lead to death, uh, the death of babies. And we need to pray for them, for their conversion and pray for the babies that uh, we're hoping can go and get into heaven. Um, of course, you know, my 15 year old daughter happens to decide to ask me a question. I just don't understand how they perform these abortions. How do they do it? And knowing that I only had a couple of minutes to get to the facility, I just proceeded to kind of tell them that, um, you know, I, I was trying to be as, as candid as possible, but knowing that I had a very short amount of time to explain. I talked about suction, I talked about forceps, I talked about injection, and without them really knowing, especially knowing my 10 year old wasn't, he wasn't gonna really understand what I was talking about, I tried to put it in another tone where I felt like both of them would understand it. So I said, hey, when you, when you see a newborn uh, and a baby, you usually think, just like me, I, I, I turn into a baby, I make baby noises, I'm not going to do any baby noises on this, but I do I make baby noises. I, I, I adore their cheeks, um, their hair, how they look like mom and dad. I, I look at um, how tiny their fingers are. And what my favorite is, of, of course, the rolls on their arms and their um, and their their legs. Um, but especially um, the smell of a new a baby, a newborn is just it's amazing. It's amazing to see. Um, how, how life is so precious and the gift of life and the gift of parenting, fatherhood and motherhood. So I tried to preface that, you know, when you hear the baby crying, 
any mom or dad is going to try to figure out how can I how can I appease my baby? What's wrong? You know, um, you know, are, are do they need a diaper change? Are they um, hungry? Um, are they hot? Uh, you know, there's there's all sorts of things that come to mind. And I said, what if the baby was crying for ten minutes? What well, what would you do? What if the baby was crying for thirty minutes? Would you be worried? If you were the one babysitting them, would you be worried? And from that point, I said, well, imagine that crying and the crying that might occur in an abortion clinic like this. If there are, let's say, 30 or 40 procedures a day without me knowing the true statistics of this particular facility in Orange, what if there were 30 or 40 of those cries and you could hear it and you could feel the pain of not being answered by their mom or dad it's it's a tough pill to swallow you almost don't even want to think about it and the comment i got from my 10 year old was i already have a headache thinking about it so i, I at that point we were exiting and i, I kind of let it let it be so I fast forward to pulling up and seeing a sea of people. I see priests, I see nuns, I see young, I see old, I see all sorts of cultures. I see signs, 40 days for life and abortion. I see probably a 12 foot cross, wooden cross there. And then I started to realize this is probably more than I had expected, but someone has to speak out on behalf of the vulnerable. And we we figured, okay, where, where do we park? And, you know, dumb idea was, do I turn into that parking lot? I'm like, no, I'm gonna go park by the dollar store. And that's what we did. So you can imagine this this facility is buzzing. I mean, this this is probably one of the busiest um clinics in orange county because it's right by a freeway easy to get to it's of course the strategy behind the demographics of the area and those that seek this kind of quote health care is there because they know that they can get their business we're walking you know waiting for the light and everything and we're just thinking oh my gosh i'm not sure What's going to happen? How how this is going to be formatted? Are the kids going to be okay? Are we safe? There's about nine of us, eight or nine of us. And we're walking and it's loud. We go under the freeway and it's loud. It's cars just flying by. And I'm thinking to myself, it's kind of out of our comfort zone. And I could tell that there's tension in our group. But I knew it was the right place to be. We could be doing anything on a Saturday. If I asked any of you guys what you're doing this Saturday, most of you probably would be relaxing, um, doing chores, uh, working on the backyard, fixing the car, catching up on stuff, basketball games, uh, all sorts of things, grocery. But we were there, and I, I needed to make sure that whatever we encountered there, we were prepared for. And the more I saw signs and the more, we, you know, as we crossed the street, I knew that I wasn't sure if we were going to be met with hatred, if we were going to be um, encountering someone that might change their mind. I don't know. But as we walked in there, um, you know, I saw people that, that I recognized. You know, I gave a hug to a gentleman who I know through basketball and through the parish. I um, acknowledged the the head of the ministry, I saw Brendan and I saw a lot of the deacons and, and priests from, from St. Martin's. And I, I just looked and I looked up and I could see in big letters, Planned Parenthood. I could see tons of cars in the facility parking lot, which led me to believe these are either patients or these are 
people that perform the abortions or these are um, the people that are considered um, negotiating with those that are looking to perform an abortion. And I know what I know what some of you might say that that's not the only thing that Planned Parenthood does. But any facility can tell you that if it's 90 or 95 percent of their revenue comes from abortion, you're not fooling anybody. And I was thinking all these people are involved in this. All each floor and it's it's, you know, four or five stories. Every floor is performing something that is going to lead to death. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it leads to death. And trying to trying to explain that to kids, and for me as an adult to, to fathom the atrocity of the abortion industry, it's hard. It's a hard pill to swallow. So if I could just if I could just paint a picture of, of what it was what it looked like. We're all lined up on a, on the public sidewalk. We have a, 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 a speaker so that the person that's reciting the rosary mystery can be heard. And we're hoping that someone can hear us, knowing that there's people that are here praying for you that want to give you another option. That if you aren't able to take care of your baby or you don't feel like you can, we're going to find someone that can or that can help you take care of your baby, even if your the father has walked out or whatever your case is. We're not there to pass judgment. And I want to make that very clear to you guys. This is not a time to pass judgment. I don't want I don't like being judged. As as Catholic believers, there's only one judge. And the way I see it is I'm there to go, come with them with mercy empathy, compassion, understanding, and everything that they probably aren't getting because they must have they must feel hopeless that this is the only way. And and this is not to pass judgment on those that have already made the mistake of going through an abortion. But we hate the sin and we love the sinner. Hate the sin but love the sinner. And it's so crucial because God loved all the sinners. Jesus, when he walked on earth, loved all the sinners. Who makes up the, his disciples? It was broken people. So when I think about our time there, I could see the tension just building. And it wasn't just myself. A lot of us, of the hundred of us there, there were probably 50 of us that were probably more on the newer side. Uh, many probably showing it because it is 40 days for life. But I think what caught me was when they were passing out the flyer of the rosary mysteries to follow, but they also had these pins of baby feet. And on it, if you're listening to the podcast, it just says precious feet. And it says the exact size and shape of a 10 week unborn baby's feet. And when you look at how tiny and innocent that is and the statistics that are on there, it, it, it really breaks your heart. And if I felt as emotional as I have, imagine a 15 year old breaking down crying in front of an abortion clinic. And, and that, that was what I saw in my daughter. And I think that kind of experience will be a learning experience that that no book or words from my mouth could ever ever teach that experience and and dads if if you kind of see where i'm going with this the experiences that we share with our kids is even that much more of a blessing because we're talking about moms and, and maybe potentially boyfriends or dads that will never understand the mistake that they might be making by going through with a uh, an abortion. 
but to see my daughter in tears just it broke my heart and i can say i had to, i had to hold back tears and there were a lot of us that i talked to afterwards that said the same thing that they were holding back tears there were people beeping at us and and in my head i'm like what is wrong with these people like how much hatred do you have to have in your mind when we're here to pray f for conversion we're here to pray for the babies that didn't have a chance at life to breathe that are so dependent on a mom or dad and never never had a, sh a shot and the more I, I i was you know very defensive with are my kids going to be okay is is my wife going to be okay are my friends and my neighbors going to be okay are my per my fellow parishioners going to be okay and then i thought if if, if i'm going to you know be hurt or attacked for whatever reason it's it's going to be for for fighting for something that i believe is is right and just and that is being pro life and being there to pray on behalf of of those that feel like they're just hopeless and those that are going through a job and thinking of this just as a business as um you know making x amount of dollars per abortion per appointment i mean if you can imagine an abortionist a doctor going from one room you know forceps suction injection and and the remains that are on a table the remains if if you ever if you've ever seen any of the, the, the gruesome pictures that they that they show on liveaction.org or any of the pro life you know students for life or anything else it's it's disturbing it's very disturbing and i just think of all the people that were there on behalf of that i i, I think back to a moment where not only was i seeing my daughter being very distraught looking at the feet the pin the pin of the feet of the child but i also could feel my 10 year old being shaken and like any dad, I put my arm around him. You know, again, we're, we're surrounded. We're surrounded on, on a sidewalk. And I'm holding him and I'm thinking to myself, you'll understand one day why we're here. And what I, what I, what I pictured was my rosary hanging, his rosary hanging, and I could see our shadows, the shadow of a father over, over a son. And that's the way I picture... A lot of my life if, if you if you guys are watching this on YouTube you can see this this st. Joseph statue and leading into the cons the, uh, the consecration to st. Joseph in in this upcoming Lent it's gonna be so transformative for all of you but I always think about his responsibility in in training and raising and teaching Jesus on manhood and that's something I wanted to teach my son and this this was one of those moments but seeing the rosaries there and then looking at the flower uh, there's some flower petals that were formed in, in a cross on the sidewalk leading into the Planned Parenthood facility and I just thought to myself how sad it is to think of not only what happens here but everyone that contributes to thinking that this is okay but I, then I start to think about the pro-life movement, and I think about the people that are outspoken, even though it's uncomfortable. Lila Rose, Abby Johnson, Father Frank Pavone, all the organizations that are there to, to fight this, fight this dis disgusting act that is considered acceptable in today's society. I was thinking of the cross, looking at how big the cross was and what that represented and how much these these gals probably feel like the waiters on their shoulders, that they've gotten themselves in a position where they're not sure if they can take care of a child or they're being tempted by the devil to pretend that it's not a child, that it's not, it's a clump of cells. You guys hear it all the time.
and this is not again and it's not an attack on on a, a woman it's it's an attack if you feel like on your choice to take the life of an innocent child what about the child that, what about the life of that that boy or that girl or those twins on liveaction.org it says that there's 62 million people that have been killed since 1973 that's enough people to fill Sunday's Super Bowl stadium 940 times 62 million people killed since 1973 that's a generation and you if you think about the Super Bowl you think about a stadium and you think about seats being filled you think about cheering and yelling for your favorite team your your player for for um for a great catch or or something exciting happening but imagine that stadium being filled with the cries of a child crying for help from the pain that they're they're suffering from being ripped from their mother's womb. Imagine that stadium of people crying. Now imagine that stadium and the crying and the decibels you would hear from that crying times 940. You would be traumatized if you heard 900 if you heard 900 and 40 times that amount of babies crying it's it's unreal to me what i what i think i want to share with you guys is the pro life movement is it's it's become such an eye opener for me and i've always told the kids that every rosary bead means something for someone and it very much means the most to those that aren't able to pray for themselves. You know, the abortion industry looks at this as a business. They don't even look at the consequences of what they're participating in. If you're going to go down in history as a part of this, that's probably the ugly side of history. I think that I'm focused on the youth because the youth, I believe, have, have not, they're, they're being indoctrinated by what they hear in society, what they might hear in their, their school. And this particular instance, a lot of those that go through with an abortion are probably only thinking about what, how it affects them. And that this is my only hope. This is my only way. And it's probably a, a deadbeat dad or a, a boyfriend that's telling them this. Or they, worse, even worse, they have no one that they can turn to because they're hiding it. And then to think that how much trauma there is, not only the physical recovery from an abortion, what it does to the body, but the emotional trauma and thinking about how much of that is going to affect them moving forward because you know you may you you may think you're hiding that but think about it god knows everything god is all knowing and that's really probably one of the reasons why people don't like to think about being accountable to god and his will because there there is a lot of shame that comes with that There's a documentary specifically that, that hit me hard that I, I watched called Life After Abortion. I watched it on Amazon Prime and basically it, it was about insiders in the abortion industry, how they get you to believe that abortion is the only way. They tell you about how what they say to you why they don't show you an ultrasound, 
what the actual abortion is like compared to what they tell you. They they tell you about the doctor going from one room to another just constantly. <laughs> abortion after abortion. Like an assembly line. Cash, cash, cash. That's all they think about. But it ta- it, it allows the women that have gone through an abortion to, to share with them their experience on the abortion, the effects that it's had on them the rest of their lives, and then on top of that, um, explaining what what the trauma is like as they try to cope with how they've they've felt the what ends up what ends up happening is if if you listen to it it's really just even more atrocious to hear about how they they to hear parts being left in them and to find that weeks later that's left in their womb to the the physical scars, the emotional scars, and feeling like you're the one that's inconveniencing them by calling because you're feeling a certain way. It's like, uh, we've collected your money. What do you want, lady? It's it's all a lie. The, and that's that's what I think I want you guys to, to realize. Like this, this, this has been happening since 1973. This is, this is not really anything new. But we have to counsel the ignorant and we have to be the voice for the for the vulnerable i think my message to you guys is look at what the corporal works of mercy are and how what are we doing what are we doing to serve god's people my last message to you guys uh cuz i could i could really go on with this is whatever you do look at the experiences that you share with your kids and your family. Make these learning lessons powerful. In retrospect, I, I don't regret going there anymore. I knew it was going to be uncomfortable, but my message to you guys is don't back down. Don't back down from the situations that make you uncomfortable, especially if, if in God's eyes, it's right and just. Lean on your Catholic faith. And just know, if you're doing good for God, it's worth all the suffering you might get or the uncomfortable feeling you might get. Peace and love, y'all.